Hello again, it's good to be back with you. I get a lot of questions about area moment of inertia, and even though I've done a video or two about this in the past, it's probably time to have another look. Area moment of inertia is just the name we give to stiffness due to the shape of a beam. Okay? Now, area moment of inertia is a, is a very old-fashioned name. It came about a long, long time ago. Probably not what I would use right now, but that's what we're stuck with. Um, I've got a beam right here. This is just a piece of aluminum. And I don't know what flavor it is. It's probably 6061T6. Okay, it's got an elastic modulus of about 70 gigapascals or 10 million psi if you want to do it in English units. That's the stiffness due to the material it's made out of. There's also a stiffness term due to shape, and that's the area moment of inertia. I've got a larger section of the beam here. I cut off a piece of 2x4 in my lab. Okay, so I've got the end uh, drawn there. Hopefully you can see that. I, I, highlighted it a little bit so that to outline it. But there's two ways we can do this. If I want to make a beam out of a 2x4, I can hold it this way or I can hold it this way. Right? Same beam, same material, same everything. The only thing that changes is the geometry. Now the elastic modulus of, I don't know, what's this pine I guess, is pretty low. But we make houses of this stuff all the time. Clearly it works. And one of the reasons it works is we're careful about how we align these and how the area moment of inertia applies. So the area moment of inertia of a rectangle, and its area moment of inertia is almost always called I, okay? Okay, this is for a rectangle. Now, for different shapes, it's a different expression. I've got some videos showing how to calculate this for different expressions. If you don't know what else to do, just go on the web and look it up. All right? So, this is, remember, stiffness due to cross-sectional shape. If H gets big, H cubed gets really big, which means this gets really big. Okay? So, think about a 2x4. Now, in the old days, they were called 2x4s because they were actually 2 inches by 4 inches. They're not anymore. They're 1.5 by 3.5 if you're lucky. So let's figure out the area moment of inertia of a 2x4 that's laying down. Okay? Okay, I'll call that I1. That's 1, 12. B is now going to be 3.5 inches times 1.5 inches cubed. And that's how do I want to do this. Hang on. I want to make this clear that that's not inches cubed. There we go. That's that's a little less ambiguous, okay? And that's because this is three and a half. That's one and a half. And if you crank that out, you get 0.984. And the units are inches to the fourth. Kind of an odd unit, but that's what you get when you have a distance times a distance cubed. And you're going to have uh, inches to the fourth. Now let's draw it this way. Let's say you're going to make your structure with a, with a 2x4 standing up, okay? Same expression, only now these numbers are just going to be reversed. So 1.5 inches wide, and again, I'll just, I don't want to do it this way. There we go. 1.5 inches wide times 3.5 inches high. Okay. Now, normally I wouldn't work in inches, but these, this is, I'm in the United States, and these are always called 2x4s. It's, it's kind, of, kind of fighting tradition if I, if I try to do this in metric. So if I do this, I get 5.359. Make sure I got that right. 5.359 inches to the fourth. Big, big, big change in stiffness. The, the ratio of I2 to I1 is 5.444. All right? So I get to multiply by stiffness by a factor of 5.4 to get that. Now, if you want an ex example, imagine I have a beam here and it's simply supported. That is, the ends can rotate. Okay, simply supported means the ends, the ends can do this if they want to. All right? If I put a load right there, F, and I want to find the displacement right in the middle, 
Okay, and I'll call that uh, maybe delta y for displacement. That is fl cubed over 48ei. Okay, and that's we can. This, this comes from the uh, solving the differential equation that describes the def deflection of a beam. That'd be another video, I suppose. Okay, force, length cubed, by the way. So geometry makes a big difference. If length gets really high, the um, deformation is going to get really high. Short beams are stiffer than long beams. Well, go figure. There's 48, just a constant. There's E, the material property, material parameter, and there's I. So the bigger I is, the stiffer the beam is, the lower the displacement. But this is, I mean, it's nice to sit here on a whiteboard and do this. Let's try it. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about area and moment of inertia mathematically. Let's see what it looks like physically. This is just a 2 by 4, not actually 2 by 4 inches, it's a little less than that. And it's being supported simply on these two ends, with the, these uh, cool supports that Professor Denton in my department lent me. So very thank you, Professor Denton. And let's try this two ways. I'm going to stand in the middle here, and I'm going to try not to fall off. And what you're going to notice is the deformation is relatively low, okay? So if I do this, about the middle. Okay. There we go. I'm standing here. That wasn't been standing there very long. That's uh, not very much deformation. Let's make one change. Same materials, same geometry, same everything, except I'm going to pull this out, rotate it 90 degrees, and now instead of the large direction being vertical, the small direction is vertical, and the area moment of inertia is going down quite a bit. It makes it easier to stand on. There, now, there we go. Now look at the wiggling a little bit because I'm trying not to fall off it, but you can see that's the uh, much, much larger deformation. I can sit on this now, even though the weight of my legs is not even being supported, it's still quite flexible. So, there you have it, the area moment of inertia made real. Hope this helps. Talk to you next time.